Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. So this video was inspired by the years of friends and family asking me if I'm a woodworker. The short answer is no, I'm not a woodworker. I do a lot of things with wood, but I do not specialize in woodworking. I can't even identify more than like five types of wood. Why? Because I don't usually work with more than a few types of wood. Okay, so what actually is a carpenter then? Well, a carpenter is an assembly systems specialist for houses, buildings, and infrastructure. So basically, whether it's a concrete bridge or a picture you pulled off of Pinterest, we are the guys that you bring that picture to that know the systems to get that thing built, or at least specialize in one of the main systems to do it. So think of a concrete bridge. Well, there's no concrete without form work. And how do you do form work? Well, you hire concrete form workers, which are carpenters, to do the form work. So broadly speaking, carpentry can be broken down into three categories. There's concrete form work, there's framing, and then there's finished carpentry. And if you're lucky in your career as a carpenter, you may get to actually do all three of those. And I worked for general contractors who generally would do all three of those on their jobs. So I got to experience all of them, which is great. And I also worked for contractors who specialized in each and every one of those too. I had a lot of different jobs throughout my career before becoming self-employed. Okay, so now let's get into it. So a concrete form worker, whether it's a large commercial construction building or whether it's like a residential footing and foundation, what they do is they use wood, so plywood and two by fours, two by six, two by twelves, whatever it is they need they build boxes to pour concrete into. It's that simple. And the box has to be strong enough to hold that concrete, which the taller the concrete goes and the wider it is, the more force that wet concrete pushes on the forms. So when you're building formwork, you have to know how to account for all of that and make sure that it doesn't blow out because there's nothing worse than having a blowout in concrete. And that's where the form lets go and all the concrete spills out. Those are disastrous, sometimes dangerous, and always expensive. And concrete formwork can be pretty rough or it can be incredibly skillful. To do fine detailed architectural concrete, you're basically building a cabinet to pour concrete into. There's no second chances. If you don't build that thing perfectly and strong enough, you're gonna get weird, lumpy, not straight concrete. So architectural concrete is a big deal and it's gotta be done right. All right, so once your concrete's done, the next thing is framing. Now, framing is the most obvious use of just like raw, general woodwork, I think, that carpenters do. You're using two by fours, two by sixes, and again, plywood. So similar things as concrete formwork, but you're using those products to build the structure, a frame, the skeleton of a house. And it looks really obvious that, hey, these guys work with wood. Whereas say something like form work, a lot of the time those big gang forms can often be like fabricated steel parts that get used over and over and over and over again. So the link to carpentry starts to get a little bit lost other than the fact that they're using hammers and nails a lot. But framing is definitely obviously carpentry. They're banging pieces of wood together to make a shape. Okay, so what about finished carpentry? Well, finished carpentry is not cabinetry. And a lot of people get that kind of confused. A lot of the time, um, people with less knowledge of the trades think that I maybe build cabinets too. And that's its whole own trade, often referred to as a joiner. And being a cabinet worker is not necessarily the same as being a woodworker. When you're a cabinet worker, you're often dealing with things like MDF and you know all kinds of like composite woods with just a veneer. But I've veered off of my finished carpentry talk a little bit, which is, so finished carpentry is the finishing stage of a house. Once you've got the formwork done, once the frame is up, once all the drywall and stuff is done, and drywall is not part of carpentry. I'll get into that a little bit towards the end of the video. But once all those stages are done, then it's time to finish the house. And so that means putting the doors in, putting the trims that hide the rough edges of the door, putting the baseboards that hide the rough edges of the floor, not the floor, but the bottom of the wall. Basically, it's putting a little piece of wood where all the dissimilar materials meet so that it ends up looking finished, hence finished carpentry. So finished carpentry is probably the closest to woodworking. You need to know how to put together joints that are gonna hold so there's a lot of gluing, but you know, a finished carpenter can't necessarily build you like a fine wood table. That's not what we specialize in. That's a woodworker. 
and there are a lot of carpenters who have woodworking skills, but this is kind of a separate enterprise that they would have gained on their own. So personally, I'm not actually much of a woodworker. I am a systems assembly, what is it? An assembly systems specialist. Like I know how to build something from the ground up. I know the systems that are involved and I know the people that I need to hire for the things that I don't know how to do. And basically I can take that picture, whether it's a plan or again, a thing off Pinterest, and I can make that a reality. So that's what I know how to do as a carpenter. But getting back to it, so why are some carpenters woodworkers? Again, they just found an interest in wood and they continued to expand that interest outside of their specific realm of work if they're say a ticketed carpenter. So why did I get into drywall? Well, for some reason I was specifically interested in it. Whenever I would see the drywallers on site and they're floating that mud around, I was like mesmerized. I was super interested. So I learned how to drywall outside of the scope of my regular work. But because I worked for general contractors instead of specialists, which is, I could get into that in another video, but because I work for the general contractors, there was always an opportunity for me to learn how to do patches and all this stuff. And so basically the patches led to doing bigger patches, which led to doing small jobs for the general contractor I worked for. I'm speaking small drywall jobs here. That led to side jobs. And then eventually the side jobs led to full-time work. So that's how I ended up doing so much drywall work. And it was totally separate from the actual scope of the carpentry work. And there's a lot of overlap in trades if you're interested in learning stuff. So Finnish carpenters often learn how to paint because, well, the next thing you do after you install the Finnish work is painting. So it's very common for people to learn a little bit about the trade that comes before and after them. And in fact, in my opinion, it's absolutely relevant to know quite a bit about the trades that come before and after you. Without that information, you're just a specialist that basically goes and does their job at some sort of a piecework rate and doesn't know the problems that they're causing for everybody down the road. Ironically, I bet you'd be hard pressed to find a piecework that can't point out all the problems that all the people before them caused for him <laughs> or her. <laughs> Anyways, um, I hope this clears up a little bit of what carpenters actually do and what a carpenter actually is. It can be called different things in different countries, but here in North America, they're called carpenters. In a lot of parts of Europe and Australia and New Zealand, I think you guys call them builders. And traditionally, most of the people that wind up being general contractors often started in carpentry. That seems to be where that path naturally leads to. The other people that often become general contractors are more the entrepreneurial business type people. And um, some of them make good general contractors and some of them make the worst ones you can work for. <sighs> There's a fine line between actually making money in general contracting and doing a good job. And um, yeah, it's a good general contractor that knows how to do both. Anyways, um, I'm all done talking about this. I hope you got something out of this video. And I want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. And yeah, I'm an actual carpenter. That's what I actually did. The drywall was a side gig. It just so happened that there wasn't a lot of good drywall videos on YouTube. So that's what took off. There's more than a handful of woodworking channels of people that either are real woodworkers or are weekend warriors in their garage. So, you know, I've thought about making some woodworking videos, but I don't really know that much about it. Eventually I'm going to have a workshop in my little garage over here. Um, but I don't know what kind of videos are going to come out of it. Anyways, totally tangented that ADHD brain going rapid fire on you guys. Okay. I'm done. I got to edit this video. I hope you're doing awesome. Hope your project's going well. And um, yeah, till the next one.